All right, I'll, I'll jump in now. So yes. it looks like uh, we are broadcasting, so we will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. Here. Council Member Botorf. Here. Council Member Story. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. Mayor Peterson. Here. Thank you. Um, I, let's go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance and then I'll turn it over uh, to our city clerk to speak about how to participate in this remote meeting. So I will go ahead and request uh, that one of our council members lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, council <laughs> Member Story, would you mind uh, leading us this evening? Let's get Ed the last turn. Oh, good point. I apologize. Council I Member thought that'd be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's a good choice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, take it away. I, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Bratorf. Uh, I'm going to turn it over now to our city clerk to provide some information about how to participate in this meeting remotely. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Hello and welcome to the Capitola City Council meeting. Thank you for joining us on a Tuesday this week. In accordance with the current Santa Cruz County Health Order and the Governor's Executive Order N2920, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Council and staff are meeting via Zoom and there are several ways for the public to walk, watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting over Zoom or with your phone is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the slides now shown and on the published meeting agenda. Thank you for attending this Capitola City Council meeting. Mayor Peterson, uh, back to you. Thank you. Uh, I'll now ask for a report on closed session. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Closed session was held on the items on the agenda and direction was given to staff. Thank you. Uh, are there any additional materials for tonight's meeting? No, none were received. Great, thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? No changes to the agenda tonight. Great, thank you. We will now move on to public comment. Now is the time for members of the public to address the council on items not on tonight's agenda. I will turn it over to our moderator uh, to determine if there's any public comments either written or uh, by attendees of tonight's meeting. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. I do not see anyone in attendance with their asking for public comment and I do not see any emails. All right, great, thank you. With that, we will close public comment and bring it to city council and staff comments. And we'll start with staff. Are there any comments from staff this evening? Um, yes, I had a comment. So I just wanted to um, announce to the public that the city of Capitola's opening recruitment for advisory body, people that want to um, participate in their local government, please feel free to apply if you'd like to join one of our um, many boards or commissions. There's more information on our website, cityofcapitola.org. Just click on serve on a city board commission or committee underneath community news. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Uh, any city council comments? If there's any city, city council members with uh, comments this evening, please feel free to raise your hand uh, or, or physically raise your hand, <laughs> either one. All right, seeing none, we will move along uh, to item seven, our consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar will be enacted in one motion in the form listed on the agenda, and there's no separate discussion uh, prior to the time the council votes unless members of the council or public request specific items to be discussed for separate review. Are there any, I will turn over to our moderator to see if there was any members of the public that requested uh, items on our consent calendar to be removed. Mayor Peterson, I do not see any attendees requesting, and I do not see any emails. Great, thank you. 
I do see Councilmember Bertrand has his hand raised. Was there an item on consent that you were looking to have removed, Councilmember Bertrand? You're on mute still. I was just waiting to make a motion, that's all. Oh, okay, great. Uh, well, then if no one wants anything removed from the consent calendar, uh, Councilmember Bertrand, I'll turn it over to you for a motion. I'd like to move the consent calendar. I'll second. All right, we have a motion from Councilmember Bertrand and a second from Councilmember Botworth. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Councilmember Bertrand. Aye. Councilmember Botworth. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you so much. We will move on to item eight, general government and public hearings, and we'll begin with item 8A, uh, uh, Recreation Division Strategic Plan. And I'll turn it over to staff. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor, Council Members. I'll take a minute to share my screen. All right. So the item before you this evening is the Recreation Strategic Plan. Um, now, in March or before March, uh, uh, before the pandemic, I brought the um, strategic, the Recreation Strategic Plan before Council, and at that time. Um, was given direction, and so this is the second presentation of the strategic plan. Um, so I'm going to walk you through a little bit of a reminder as well as um, some updates. So in the spring of 2019, Recreation contracted with um, uh, Blue Point Planning in order to facilitate the uh, strategic plan process, and through that process, um, a core team was developed, but it consisted of community stakeholders as well as staff, and they embarked upon a evaluation process um, through discussion as well as by collecting community feedback where we did surveys and held a community meeting. Uh, this is what the process has, uh, existed over a six-month period. That core team in discussion and through community feedback identified a few um, uh, items that were in, put into the strategic plan, and some of those areas were some inefficiencies that seem to exist within the city uh, that would be connected to recreation. Uh, that core team also discussed areas of growth and success that the division currently already has. Um, and then through our public outreach, we learned what public desires from rec our recreation, as well as existing points of confusion um, that the public experiences within recreation or what they would expect to be within recreation. Um, through that process, through that information, through that conversation, a new mission, vision, and set of values were developed as kind of a guiding force for the strategic plan. And then four goals with corresponding strategies that would outline the work plan of the strategic plan if adopted. If this plan is approved, uh, that work plan would go through to the conclusion of 2025. Now, Per council direction, the strategic plan was presented to uh, the Art and Cultural Commission, and the feedback has been incorporated into the plan as well as this presentation. Um, if approved, uh, or sorry, the plan may be amended over time, um, and then, of course, the council would review any budget changes um, or new programs that would be associated with the plan. And so launching into the four goals, I'd like to start by um, going through each of the goals and touching briefly on the strategies that would be um, implemented as that work plan. 
So the first goal is an efficient and effective division. Um, so this that core team had a conversation, and a lot of that was focusing on ways that the division could be more efficient and effective and incorporate aspects of the city that often the public look to um, recreation as the, as the department or the division that that would be helpful. Um, and so some of the things that were discussed would be to provide additional operational support for city organized events. Um, we also talked about how while public works overseas parks, recreation is often seen as the programming side of parks. And so having a strategy to incorporate programming um, and programming of parks. There's also often a confusion about a special event permit process and, and, and members of the public thinking that um, it should be in uh, the approach recreation or this. And so exploring with the police department if that is um, a process that we should uh, evaluate and possibly change. Um, exploring the recreational organizational chart um, as well as fundraising and grants um, and general fund parameters for being that efficient and effective division. Goal two being affordable and accessible. Uh, so this core team had an obvious interest that um, recreation as a service to the city be something that is balanced, that is interesting to the full range of community members as well as accessible um, both in ability and in economic status. And so the strategies that were kind of outlined for this goal um, would be to engage in a conversation about um, the cost recovery policy for recreation and ensuring that there is an affordable access point, um, that uh, perhaps recreation could benefit from having a committee advisory group. It was also identified that um, there is a, as, as you are looking at the areas that we serve, that there is room for more um, team interactions and focusing on development of team programs and um, potentially internships as a way to um, connect youth or older individuals to recreation through team internships or team programming. Um, and then in addition to that, talking about the optimization of um, the park facilities and partner locations that we have at our disposal in order to maximize the amount of programming that we have have available. And then, directly related to that, goal number three, um, so maximizing facilities. Um, we often, we've had, the core team had a big conversation about the use of um, the city facilities that we have at our disposal in order to ensure that there is um, programming available and recognition that those facilities really need to be able to support that. And so some of the strategies that were incorporated into this goal um, would be to conduct a survey of facilities and those needs assessments. This would be done um, with public works, as public works would still be um, overseeing parks, but we would be working on this together in order to identify how programming opportunity would be available with those surveys, uh, with those that need assessment. Um, and then through that, identify any facility upgrades that would provide additional opportunity. And then um, any recreation programs that would be associated with any new developments that would ha occur within the city. For example, the RISPIN project that would come um, uh, hopefully in completion during this plan. And, um, so looking at what programming opportunities might exist with that new park project. Um, and then the goal, fourth goal would be partnerships. Uh, we 
many of the core team members that um, participated were actual partners uh, that the city currently already has. Um, we had members of the school district that were part of the core team. We had members of the library that were part of the core team. And so through that discussion, we talked about how it just kind of makes sense that we would uh, further develop those relationships for the benefit of recreation in the city. And so the strategies that um, would be implemented would be to develop an MOU with the school district that would outline um, some clear um, regarding the James Street Community Center uh, benefits that could go back and forth, much like our after school programming that we're currently in the new OST programming. Um, to develop an MOU with the library for programming upon the conclusion of the library and be able to provide programming through there. Um, and then also identify that there would be opportunity for other public and private, uh, excuse me, private recreation as well as events and parks. Um, for example, um, how we currently are in a partnership with county parks for the OST program, mm. um, as well as in partnership um, pursuing grants with partners and the benefit that programs could have um, through that process as well. So this plan uh, has no immediate fiscal uh, impact. However, uh, changes that would occur as a result of the strategic plan would be incorporated into the corresponding budget. Through so through the five-year process, and um, so my recommendation for you this evening is to, uh, to adopt the proposed recreation strategic plan. And with that, I am available for questions. Thank you so much. Uh, are there any questions from council? I see that Councilmember Bertrand has his hand up. I do. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I do have a question for you, Nikki, in terms of what's your vision or has it been formed for the advisory council um, proposal? And maybe some of the discussion that came through the uh, work group may be guiding your answer, I suppose. Okay, so um, if I understand your question, you're wanting to know what my vision would be for the development of, a, of an advisory body? Yeah, at this point, you know, you've had a lot of time to think about it and, you know, gone back and forth with city staff, and I'm just trying to get an idea where, where you are in terms of this uh, committee. Yeah. Um, I think that with the adoption of the strategic plan, that would be one of the things that I would immediately begin is to explore um, what kind of what kind of size of that advisory group and um, how it would fit within the plan. Um, but I, as otherwise, I haven't just further developed that. Yeah, well, that makes sense because we haven't adopted it yet. Um, the agreement with the county, you, that's not an MOU at this point, right? It was just a contractual agreement. So we'd have to reach out to them also to do an MOU. Is that what you're proposing? Are you saying the, um, the, the agreement with county parks for our OFT program? That's correct. It, 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 it is an agreement. Yeah, but it's not an MOU. Well, okay, it's an MOU. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Councilmember Bertrand. Any other questions from council members? Seeing none, we will bring this item to public comment. I'll turn it over to our moderator to let us know if there's any members of the public that have commented on this item, either via email or in person tonight. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Um, I do not see any attendees asking to comment on this item, and I do not see any emails. Great. Thank you. Uh, with that, we will close public comment and bring it back to Council for a discussion and a vote. Uh, are there any comments by Council members? And I see Vice Mayor Brooks has her hand up. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Thank you, Nikki, for the presentation. Um, I'm really excited about the plan. I'm really excited about the programming that's going to come out of this plan. I, I appreciate the intentional effort to address equity and one of the goals. I think it was goal two or three 
um, it, it's important that the program that programming that's created within our parks and rec department um, is created with that equity lens. Um, I'd like to see that some of the uh, members of the advisory board represent all community members, and, I, and that's going to be really important, at least for me, to, to see that. Um, uh, you, there was a mention of, of people of all abilities, but um, I'd love to see an expansion of that even further. Um, those are all my comments, and I'll go ahead and make a motion to pass the um, recommended action for, for this item. Thank you. I'll second that motion. That motion. Right. We have a motion by Vice Mayor Brooks and a second by Councilmember Bertrand. Councilmember Bertrand, did you have other comments or was your hand up just to second the motion? Yeah, um, well, no, I second it because I wasn't expecting you that, but I'll definitely second it. I had another question of Nikki, if I may. And um, what was the input from the um, Art and Cultural Committee? I, I don't recall that. I remember Sam brought it up because he's a member, but... I don't know if that was actually reported. I was just curious. Yeah, so um, I I incorporated it into um, the plan that was submitted uh, in the packet, and we discussed um, how the recreation support of the staff member that um, assists art and culture for the production of the movies at the beach and the music that would typically occur during the summer. Um, and so that as being one staff member um, who does a lot of events production and then recreation, also in addition moving to putting on events, between these two the staff, um, there is a benefit within the city to have a pooling of resources there. Mm -hmm. And that in the event that suddenly Kelly wasn't available anymore, that the historical information would be held and have the ability to have a little bit more fluid um, on the staff side of the management of, that, of, of those events, um, as well as identifying areas for efficiency, um, such as uh, volunteer recruitment and those kind of things, so that on the operational side, um, there would be a stronger support for both the events that art and culture puts on, as well as um, for a lot of the work that recreation is doing. Okay, thank you, Nikki. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, any additional comments from council? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes, Councilmember Bertrand. Uh, if I, uh, Madam City Clerk, if you're uh, asking for the roll call vote, you're I'm still so on sorry. Mute. Thank you, Mayor. That's okay. No problem. <laughs> Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Botorf. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much for your work on this, Nikki. We're going to move on now to item 8B, which is the Village Bollard Project, and I'll turn it over to staff. Good evening, Mayor Peterson and Council. Um, I shared my screen, just to raise your hand if everyone can see that, please. All right, perfect. Uh, before you tonight is a, in the staff agenda report, and by the way, this uh, very brief PowerPoint presentation, uh, is uh, the presentation of our village, village Bollard project and some specific details with regard to the grant funding that we acquired recently. The uh, fiscal year 19 state homeland security grant project, uh, and this project, number 005, also known as a Shishka grant, if you're familiar with the state Homeland Security grants under that program. <clears throat> Specifically, uh, the requirements under this grant that we applied for are improvements to our critical infrastructure security, uh, protection from increased uh, protection from all threats and hazards, uh, enhanced community preparedness, the prevention of violent extre extremism. And you might recall that back uh, in 19 and prior to there are a good number of uh, domestic and, and other terrorist events targeting 
outdoor venues and large scale events. And so this grant specifically was, uh, we were very much interested in applying for this grant so that we can improve our own uh, safety related to our venues. And then lastly, interjurisdictional collaboration. A little bit of information about the application process. Uh, I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with it. It's quite likely, but I want to touch on a few things. As I mentioned, this is an FY19 um, Shishkat grant, state of California. Uh, we, I'm sorry? I, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. I, if you're trying to uh, advance your slides, they haven't been advancing. Okay, I'm on slide two. Let me... Uh, yeah, we're still seeing the, the initial slide, unless that's just me, but I, I'm seeing slide one of ten. What do you see now? Which one? Slide two? It still shows me slide one. If, if other council members are seeing additional slides, let me know. It might just be an issue on my end. But I think that we're still seeing just the first slide. Yeah, the first slide that says Village Bollard Project. Yeah, it's it's uh, paging through for me as I'm talking. Hey, hey Big Mass, we're, we're actually seeing your uh, your the second screen with the big slide and the small slide at the same time. We're sure, yeah. Okay, I minimize that. I think you would want to, sorry, Jamie. Under display settings, you could just on the, on the notes pages. You would click that down arrow and then click swap presentation and notes. So display settings, okay. Okay, so now we're going to swap presenter view and slideshow. Okay. Didn't do anything. Duplication okay, work. As an alternative, Larry, do you think you could pull up his slide? His slide there in the um, in the shared drive. Yes, I, I will do that. Katie, I think if you put it on duplicate slideshow, it'll work. <laughs> This is just, if 2020 were a slideshow, this is what it would be. <laughs> Are you controlling it now, Larry? Larry, if you're trying to respond, you're still muted. Thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm sharing right now. Do we see it? Is that, yeah, that's, uh, if you go back to the first slide, Larry. There you go. One more. All right, now let me see if I can get back to it. Okay, um, Larry, go back uh, one more slide. All right, I apologize. Can you see Larry's slides now, Mayor and Council? Yes, we can see it now. All right. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the requirements under this uh, FY19 State Homeland Security Grant, Shishkat Grant, um, were several to include uh, improvements to our critical infrastructure and, and, and security features. Uh, enhanced protection from all threats and hazards, um, community preparedness, uh, efforts to prevent violent extremism. And as I mentioned um, several years ago, there was an increase in violence related to outdoor venues such as ours. Uh, we didn't see any violence, uh, of course, but there's always that concern. And then interjurisdictional collaboration. Next slide, Larry. With regard to the application process, I just wanted to mention a few things. It's, it's a lengthy process. They always are the federal grants, um, Homeland Security type grants and state grants. And in November of 2018, a couple of years ago, uh, staff made a presentation to the County Office of Emergency Services to their grants committee. That included Rosemary Anderson, the uh, Director of Emergency Services here in the county, Sheriff Hart, and a couple of others on their committee. And we made a presentation related to our security needs here in Capitola um, uh, related to large-scale special events that, that we host on an annual basis. 
Um, we were happy to learn after that presentation that uh, our proposal uh, and request for grant monies was accepted by the local committee. And so that committee gave staff direction to submit our SHISHCAP grant application to the state's Office of Emergency Services. We, we did that towards the end of 2018. <clears throat> Excuse me. Several local submissions were part of that grant request that eventually went out to the state. Uh, as is often the case, it took quite a while to get uh, results or approval from the state. In April of this year, uh, California Office of Emergency Service, Services uh, approved the entire county, the Santa Cruz County's Homeland Security Grant application, which included our request for enhancements, uh, security enhancements to our public venue here in the village in the amount of $40,000, uh, $40,526 for the city of Capitola. That grant period, by the way, is September 1st of 2019 through May 31st of 2021. So you can see that even though the request was made uh, a couple of years ago, we're coming up on the end of the actual grant period in May of next year. This is a picture that probably most of you have seen before, and this is the uh, Begonia Festival, the last one, in 2017. And I included this picture just for two reasons. Uh, and number one, and most importantly, this reminds us all of the attraction of our uh, our city and our village area uh, to people from throughout the region and beyond as it relates to our uh, hosted special events, this one being the largest that we've experienced, or certainly that I've experienced in my time here. Uh, and then secondarily, it does introduce uh, from a police department perspective, perspective the challenges of properly managing crowd movement uh, and managing security needs within a venue like this here in Capitola. Uh, sorry, Larry, next slide. I'm sorry, go back to, um, there you go. Now, this is a little bit of a smaller uh, event here. Uh, this is the car show. Uh, but it's also a large event. It attracts 10 to 15,000 people on a two-day uh, weekend in, in June of every year. And, uh, of course, not this year. All events were canceled. Uh, but this is also... Uh, an event that uh, could potentially introduce some, does introduce some safety concerns as it relates to uh, locking down the venue, closing down the village, uh, the number of pedestrians and expensive vehicles within that area, and the need for the police department and the entire city to properly uh, protect property uh, and people. The next slide, Larry. And so when we talk about crowd management and safety, um, uh, and as a reminder, specifically we're talking about four events in Capitola that are the largest of all of the special events. That being, as I mentioned, the car show, which happens in June, followed by Wharf to Wharf uh, at the end of July, the Art and Wine Festival at the end of September or mid-September, uh, and then the Capitola Beach Festival. Those are the largest of our general special events. And those are the events, by the way, where we lock down the village for the duration or in the uh, example of the car show for the first day of the event. And so how do we as a police department ensure um, that we manage the crowd properly and, and that we maintain a high level of safety for all the participants? And I want to touch on a couple of things. You've heard me talk about this before. Each of these events requires an operational order or a contingency plan that is put together by someone on my staff, typically a, a sergeant under the direction of Captain Daly. And then, of course, we coordinate with the event organizers early on uh, in the event schedule to make sure that we are aware of their concerns, we're aware of their uh, civilian staffing numbers, and, and we collaborate with regard to the need to provide a safe venue for everybody. And based upon those early meetings, we identify our proper, we, the police department, our proper staffing uh, needed numbers of personnel in our police posture, or also known as our enforcement profile. Of course, there's a need for effective signage and uh, significant social media presence in advance um, of the weekend of the events. And then the last three bullets are really important to touch on a little bit um, because that is where this baller project is specifically going to uh, be advantageous and certainly benefit, I believe, the city, the community first, the city, and the police department. There's a need to identify traffic control points with each of these larger special events so that we can manage the ingress and the egress or the movement of people. Um, there's also a need for the vis a visible deterrence, efforts at visible deterrence also known as target hardening. And historically in Capitola, you know what that looks like at the intersections that we're going to talk about in a minute. That's the placement, and thanks to Steve and his crew for the placement of the signage and the placement of the barriers. And then there's a need um, 
historically to support those barriers at, barriers at those intersections with personnel, a large number of personnel, for certainly for the Art and Wine uh, Festival and for the Wharf to Wharf. Uh, and, and the visibility does create a, an ex, a level of deterrence that is advantageous, I believe. But, it, but what it does, it takes away from the ability to place uh, a number of needed personnel on foot moving about the venue, uh, which is also a significant deterrence. Next slide there. <clears throat> and so with the Village Bollard project, there are three intersections that we're all familiar with. When we close down the village uh, in support of one of our special events, there's three critical infrastructures that are always needed to properly and safely um, close down the village and prevent uh, open to pedestrians but not open to vehicles. And those intersections are Stockton and Esplanade up here uh, just on the other side of the Stockton Bridge. Uh, Capitola Avenue in Stockton. And then lastly, the third critical intersection, traffic control point is how we refer to them, is up there at uh, uh, Park Place and, and Park. This is the most difficult, uh, by the way, uh, traffic control point to manage for a couple of reasons. It's, it's the widest street. Uh, it's usually the busiest street by traffic volume, usually uh, because that's where the visitors typically are entering the venue. Uh, and it requires the largest number of personnel to properly maintain our barriers uh, in the closure of the, the street at that location. Um, you know that during the car show on the second day, the Sunday, we open up the venue and we allow for traffic, uh, local traffic or, or all vehicular traffic to pass through the venue. And so we open up this barrier here during the car show and we move it to San Jose in this location. And then we open up this barrier here and we move it down to the exit of the Esplanade so that we allow for passage of others not attending the event to come through our city and then back out Park Boulevard. That's an easy adjustment during the car show. Um, in the future, it might be, I do predict that we're going to see that this smaller project is very effective for us. And it might be that we have plans in place in the future to uh, erect the same systems. It wouldn't require the same number of poles. Steve, you and I talked about this, um, but but uh, consider the same type of system here uh, and here in support of the car show. Next slide. Sorry. When we were doing some research, myself and Captain Dowley, with regard to uh, considering application for this grant, we visited. Uh, we, we made contact first with the city of Vacaville and the Vacaville Police Department. And I was familiar with some of their rather large venues in their small downtown area. And that's the first time I was exposed to these bollards. Uh, and so I spoke to one of my contacts there, a captain, and asked about um, the utilization of the bollards, how long they had been using them, uh, cost, et cetera, and put ourselves in a good position to feel comfortable in making our request through initially the county and then eventually to the state uh, that would be successful in uh, seeking and being granted approval for this um, uh, project as it relates to enhanced security of the need for something a little bit more uh, effective and a little bit more of a deter deterrent than the historical barriers that we've been using. And as I mentioned, I'm going to say it again, it's really important for me to be able to free up some personnel and, and place them inside the venue on foot, uh, engaging with the crowd, but also being uh, more effective as eyes and ears as it relates to maintain a high level of security for these types of events. Next slide, Larry. And so what staff is asking for from uh, council this evening is to adopt the proposed resolution accepting the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services grant funds for the FY19 State Homeland Security Grant Project at number 005, Portable Baller Security Barriers, and to amend the current FY20 and 21 budget. And I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you so much, Chief. Uh, I see Councilmember Bottorf has his hand up. Oh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Chief, for that presentation. I, I'm not sure if you were if you covered it when you were pointing, because I wasn't able to follow your cursor on a couple things. But um, I guess my question is, you know, the, the three places that you've identified, I see, but or do you have any concern about having Ballard on El Camino Media or San Jose? and give me your thoughts on why those two streets aren't important. 
on they are important. Uh, first off, we do have staff um, that are assigned to park, place, and park that also monitor the traffic on uh, El Camino Media, and they've been able to do that effectively without placing additional persons or barriers uh, at that location. We're not greatly concerned about that, but it is part of our contingency planning. And then if your second question, Councilmember Botsarf, was related to San Jose, in, uh, let's use Art and Wine as the example, where the, where the village is closed down for the entire weekend. We effectively um, prevent any or eliminate concerns as it relates to San Jose because of the placement of the barriers at Cap Ave and Stockton, uh, Stockton and Esplanade, and then, as mentioned, Park Place and Park. And so there's not a need, in our opinion, um, to place barriers. Am I, am I correct in uh, asking a council member that you're talking about this location here? Uh, let me see if I think. I'm talking about the, it's the intersection of Cap Avenue and San Jose. I know it's a narrow street, and it is one way, but I wasn't sure, you know, if we're trying to prevent anybody from driving a road vehicle into the, into the area, uh, they could still, you know, drive the wrong way in a one-way street and access that. But I don't, I, I was under the impression that we were trying to do this in a way that it wasn't necessary to use a lot of manpower to occupy these points. They would be pretty much standalone. But uh, you could expand on that. I will expand on that. Uh, we will be more able to use this system as a standalone system, um, significantly better as it relates to a visual deterrence. But there will still be a need to have personnel monitoring these intersections, even when the bollards are in place. The number of personnel to monitor will be about half what we currently need when we have the intersections blocked with barricades and, barricades and signage. Great. Thanks for that explanation. I appreciate that. Thank you. Chief, if you could go back to that map again, Larry. So I'm, um, just to clarify, it looks like one of them says Park and Park Place, but it's on Monterey. So Park Place intersects, uh, intersects with Monterey Avenue. Um, so would these bollards be up at the Park uh, intersection, or would they be down on Monterey and Park Place? They are actually, that's right when it, as I understand, that's right when it kind of, it, it's at Monterey and Park Place. It's, it's just uh, south of El Camino Media and right across from the, um, that bright blue, uh, rather large condo complex right there on, uh, on Monterey. Yeah. Right as, better explain maybe, right as you start climbing Monterey, uh, vehicles climbing Monterey. That's where the barricades have been placed. Okay, I see. I see. Okay, thank you. Um, I believe Council Member Story and then Council Member Bertrand had questions. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chief, I wanted to ask when the bollards are not in use, um, will there be plates over the holes in the street or will those just be open holes in the pictures? Well, it's hard to tell, and so that was my question. There are metal plates that are uh, embedded in the street when the bollards are not in place, um, and Steve might be able to uh, provide more specifics with regard to those plates. But, in fact, the holes are covered by those plates. Plates are removed when you place the bollards. Okay, so they look like, like little manhole covers that go over to level out the street. That's correct. Yes, yeah. okay, excellent. Thank you. All right, Councilor Bertrand, you had a question? Yeah, it was uh, similar to what Sam was talking about. So is it some way to lock the plates, the plates in place so that no one could remove them? Or some sort of, I, I just don't know, the, some kid or whatever <laughs> comes by at night and takes them. That's, that's what I was wondering about. I believe that they're fairly secure in place, but, and I apologize, Steve, can I turn to you? Yeah, I'd be happy to take that. So um, they're like the water valves or um, small valve boxes you see in the streets. They're metal metal uh, top that'll fit in there snugly. 
you could remove they, they tend to get wedged in and are difficult to remove rather quickly as they throw in the sand. The bollards themselves will be locked in place when they're in place, but the caps will not be. But that's okay. pretty standard. Okay. So thanks, Steve. Um, my second question, Chief, is you'll still have people at the top of Monterey and Park? At the where the, uh, the, the top where the rail is, yeah. Where the rail crosses Monterey, that that intersection there. Yeah, we do provide traffic control points early on, especially at Art and Line, because of the volume of traffic. Either people are asking for specific directions, uh, allowing people to get down into their homes on uh, El Camino Media. Uh, so there will be personnel utilized up there as well. As yes. Okay, thanks. All right. Any additional questions from com uh, from council? Seeing none, we'll bring this item to public comment, and I will turn it over to our moderator to let us know if there's any public comment on this item. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Um, I do not see anyone attendees with their hands up, and I do not see any emails. All right. With that, we will close public comment and bring it back to council for discussion and a vote. Uh, Councilmember Bosworth has his hand up. Yeah, I, I think this is uh, it, it's a good thing to protect us, uh, to protect our citizens when we have events. And uh, I think what it's going to do in the long term is uh, free up the amount of people that we have to connect to each one of these intersections, uh, which means they could be doing other options. So uh, with that, I, I think this is a good project, and especially we're, since we're able to secure a grant that makes it even better. I'm going to make a motion to approve staff recommendations. I'll, I'll second. second. Nope, Sam will second. All right, we have a motion from Councilmember Bosworth and a second from Councilmember Story. Councilmember Bertrand, do you have additional comments? Yeah, I have to remark that the uh, the um, the rationale for the grant, when I was reading it, it looked kind of scary. <laughs> but um, I'm glad, Chief, that you pursued it uh, and working, I guess, with people in the county uh, to get us on the list. Um, thank you very much for that opportunity uh, to provide safety for us. And as Ed mentioned, and you already reiterated, Reducing our, um, uh, what you would call it, uh, personnel requirements. Um, does that mean we're going to have just one other co uh, question, I guess? Does that mean we're going to be able to um, reduce how many people are assigned to an event because of the bollards? Will it reduce our budget in, t in that sense? No, I don't believe so. It's going to allow me to more effectively and properly deploy the personnel that are needed to manage these events. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if there's no additional comments, uh, can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Botworth. Aye. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate your work on this. Uh, we'll move now to our final item of the evening, item 8C, uh, approved plan specification and engineer's estimate for the Capitola Avenue sidewalk improvement project and authorized advertising for bids. Turn it over to staff. Thank you, Council. I'm in the process of sharing my screen. Give me a minute. I thought Ed was going to make the presentation. <laughs> Once again, good evening, Mayor and Council. Item right, before you tonight is to approve the plans and specification authorized to a bid on the Capitol Avenue sidewalk project. Um, <clears throat> just a quick background, $200,000 was included in the 2020 Capital Improvement Program budget to reconstruct the sidewalk along the north side of Capitol Avenue, which is a 300 block of Capitol Avenue, including the new retaining wall. You can see in the picture here, um, this elevated sidewalk that um, goes past three bits. Two businesses, there's some apartments up here and an apartment building here uh, will be reconstructed and a retaining wall put in here. Um, benefits of the project include uh, building compliant ADA path of travel. Even though these sidewalks, I believe, were built in the very late 1990s, 
um, where there's the uh, colored si sidewalk, it is not ADA compliant. The, the controls that we had um, doing construction inspection back then just didn't allow us to make sure that everything was being built. And to be honest, nobody was very experienced at it at that time. So both the cross slope going across the sidewalk and the running slope along it are are not compliant with the uh, current ADA regulations. So we'll be carrying out the sidewalk the entire length. And then this ramp at California and Capitol Avenue is not compliant, and we will be replacing that with a new ramp that is standard. Um, one of the bigger benefits of this project is to the parking area along Capitol Avenue. Um, the new retaining wall will allow will level out the existing landscape and allow cars to open up their doors and get out on the passenger side. Um, here, I'll back up a few slides here. You can see this landscape hill um, below the sidewalk and above the curb. That's this brown line on my fancy drawing here. So what that does is obviously that prevents the door from being able to swing open. What we're going to do is build this yellow retaining wall and then level out this area. Um, what we're, we are going to maintain about a three-foot landscaped area that will be landscaped by crews following construction of the project. And behind the curb, we are going to have a one-foot concrete extension. And you can see the picture on the right here shows what this extension does. This is a nine-inch extension at uh, Trader Joe's and Brown Ranch Shopping Center. We're going to go a little wider. We're going to go with a one-foot extension. What that allows somebody to do is open their car stand on a solid and, and wide enough surface to stand on, you know, get their stuff out of their car. You need their exit to the road or they could travel along this way. We didn't want to create two different sidewalks. Um, we could, you know, conceivably you could build a sidewalk down here and have an upper level and a lower level. We ran into accessibility problems by building one on the lower level at both ends. It was very difficult to get the two back to merge together. So we have gone with this. We are not creating a new path of travel. We are just creating an area that's better for the cars to get out of. Um, big part of this is coordination. We are working in front of three properties whose main access to their buildings is Capitol Avenue and the sidewalk we will be replacing. Um, that access will be blocked and, and a problem at times and certainly impacted. We sent a letter out to all the property owners and tenants. Staff met with two of the property owners and the restaurant owner and went over the projects, and they said they would notify their tenants, and they were all supportive of the project. Um, most tenants, especially at 328 Capitol Avenue, uh, can access the property from California Avenue. The restaurant can be accessed from California Avenue. So they, they're quite fine proceeding with the project. Uh, there are two apartments above the restaurant that can only access it off Capitol Avenue. And we will make sure there's temporary access available to them. It probably will change day to day depending on what the contractor is working on, but we will certainly maintain that they can get in and out of their units. Well, details on the project. The engineer's estimate for the project is $116,000. The current construction budget is $134,000. Um, as I state in the report, the Balance between the $200,000 budget and our construction budget is about $66,000 went into engineering and surveying on the project. Uh, we're proposing to open the bids after the holidays on January 6th, 2021, and construction will certainly be depending on weather. It shouldn't take that long to actually construct the project. Um, it will be winter or spring of this year. So the recommendations at this point are to approve the plan specification and construction estimate for the sidewalk project and offer us the advertise for bids. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, Steve, I have a quick question. You mentioned the access for the two apartment units that will need to use that sidewalk to get into uh, their apartments. But for people coming from um, the city hall parking lots, for example, walking into the village, will, be, will there be a sign to tell them to cross the street, or will they have to go into the road, or how will people um, get from city parking lots down into the village when this is closed off for construction? So we will put a sign at the crosswalk up by the fire station that says crosswalk closed ahead, cross here, okay. and um, get them to the other side. Um, if they manage to get around that or come down Fanmar, we'll, we'll put another sign by Fanmar, but they will have to cross at some point. They probably will not have 
linear access to the project for most of it. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, I see two other council members have their hands up. I apologize. I don't, uh, I'm not sure who had their hand up first, but uh, in the order that I see it on the screen, we'll go to council member Bertrand and then followed by council member Story. Council member Bertrand, you're still muted. Sorry about that. Um, so working with the property owners and some have, uh, I guess, concrete walls, I guess, uh, like the law office, are we going to replace your concrete wall or do they do that themselves? How is that going to be handled? So this is the wall you're talking about. <clears throat> they were actually these two, the sidewalk and the wall were poured uh, separately uh, when they were built, and we are just going to take this out and then pour again right next to it at a different slope. So that we, you know, if everything goes well and the contractor takes care, this wall will not be damaged and we will be able to pour right up next to it as part of that project. So we are not intending to take that wall out. Okay, thank you. Great. Council member Story? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, Steve, um, and you may have answered some of my question, but I was uh, wondering whether the sidewall is, will be wider after the project is done. I can see if you remove that little curb against the purple wall, that will create some additional uh, width to the sidewall. But otherwise, um, will the sidewall be wider? It's going to be about six inches wider. It's not going to be a significant change. Um, the way it's going to work is actually think the concrete area, but we're going to move the fence to the outside edge of the of the concrete. We are not making uh, a big change in the in the width of the sidewalk though, maybe six inches. But it will be ADA compatible with that, you know, that width. Yes, it will be. Okay, yeah, even six inches, I think every little bit. You know, yeah, we ran into, you know, trying to balance between keeping the area down below so we could have some landscaping there and get car doors open and, and widening the sidewalk uh, up above. Yeah, I, I understand. Thank you. Councilmember Bertrand, do you have another question? You're still muted, Councilmember Bertrand. Okay. Um, Steve, you brought up the uh, fence that, that makes me wonder. So that fence was designed for a certain angle to follow the sidewalk. Is this going to be a problem when you build the new wall? No, there's, the changes are, are inches um, only. And we've been in contact with the, the artists who built that, and it will certainly fit and continue to, to do what it's doing. So, yeah, we're, we will remove it and store it and then bring it back when the project's done. Thank you. All right, seeing no further questions from Council, we will bring this item to public comment. I'll turn it over to our moderator. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. I do not see any public comment on this item, and I do not see any emails. Okay. With that, we will close public comment and bring it back to Council for a comment and a vote. And I will turn it over to Council Member Botswarf, who has his hand raised. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, this project, I think the council is very well aware that this project is near and dear to me, and, and I appreciate uh, that back in March when we did the budget, I believe it was a unanimous uh, uh, approval for this project. I can't remember if Sam had to uh, recuse himself because of proximity, but uh, I want to thank the council for uh, for voting for this project. It, it, it's uh, Even though, you know, I, I, this project was, you know, near and dear to me, nothing happens in this city unless at least three people agree on it. And this was a good project. Uh, I also want to uh, take a minute to, to really uh, commend Steve and Kalosh for putting this together. I think uh, um, I think it's kind of like a farewell present is what I'm taking it as to actually get it done before I leave, and and that does mean a lot to me. Uh, I just want to give a little history, you know, on, on you know on, on this project and, and a couple other in the village, so I've got an opportunity. Um, you know, this project was not something that I invented or created. You know, Steve will tell you that this project had been on their uh, plans. Uh, I did move into the town in the town of Capitola in 2009, and they had already had drawings to do this prior to that. 
It just seemed that there was never the will or funding to make it happen. And, and the other project I want to try to draw alignment with is uh, in the village, there was a, uh, uh, at one time there was a broken sewer in front of Paradise Restaurant. And uh, the owner there was uh, doing a project to, to replace the sewer and it ended up involving quite a bit of sidewalk replacement. And I remember I walked over there when they were jack me all up and I said, we had talked about widening the sidewalks in the village and Steve actually said, well, you know, there's a village master plan. Where, where this was included, but, you know, somebody has to, you know, call the, the, the little red flag, and I remember I got into an argument with the owner of Paradise, who, who was a, a very good contributor to the city, but we, we stalled the project because we realized that was an opportunity to widen the sidewalks to what they were supposed to be in the master plan, and what you all see now is Steve actually got together with a lot of the merchants there, and, and they started a business uh, a city business partnership to share the cost of those sidewalks. And what we all have there now is brand new wide sidewalks that run from Margaritaville all the way to Zelda. And, and that's similar to what this project is. This is a project that, that you know, I, I think I, I kept beating the drum for eight years and, uh, and it took all eight years to get there. But uh, I, I think I'm going to give Steve and, and Kalosh credit for, for making this happen. And again, the city council for supporting me when I, beat the drum on this because uh, the main reason on this was is that I used to live across the street and, I, and uh, there was a couple that came out one night and the woman, they had been drinking and they uh, actually fell over the uh, that sidewalk onto the ground but the woman had a baby in her arm because there didn't used to be a wall, a rail there. And the Dark and Closer Commission went to you know great lengths to put in that fabulous uh, art piece of artwork and unfortunately we just drilled holes into our existing, you know, non-supporting when you look at that picture wall. So for me, um, you know, for many years to come, as I walk by this project, I will have good memories about this council in 2020. And of all the bad things that have happened in 2020, I think we can all just take a little, you know, pat on the back and say this is a good project. It will serve a lot of uh, people that walk in and out of this town. And, uh, and provide a place to display that beautiful piece of artwork and some safety. So uh, with that, I'm going to make a motion to approve staff recommendations. And again, big thanks to uh, Steve and Kalosh for, for making this happen. I'll second this motion. Thank you, Councilmember Botorf. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, and Councilmember Story, it looks like you have additional comments. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to explain um, why why I'm still here um, for this particular <laughs> item because um, I do have an office at 314 uh, Capitol Avenue, uh, which is the law office right in front of the project. But um, uh, the city attorney informed me that because um, I'm just there month to month, it's not considered a conflicting property interest, um, and that I could go and participate uh, uh, if I wanted to. Um, and, you know, since um, I am uh, in close proximity to this project, I see all the, res the visitors and the residents that try to pass by on that sidewalk, you know, and as Ed mentioned, I think it is a critically important uh, bottleneck for us, and this project will go toward, uh, you know, I think fixing that as well as the parking. Um, so I wanted to add that, and maybe just one little uh, additional plug to encourage the city to continue to look to improve and expand the sidewalk, uh, you know, from this point um, going, I think that would be north, uh, toward the, our parking lot. Um, and don't consider this um, uh, these improvements to be a finality, but a continuation of this effort and ultimately to where we expect everyone to part and then walk down to the village and the beach. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Story. Do we have any additional uh, comments? Seeing none, thank you to Council Member Botorf to, uh, for uh, bringing this to our attention. Uh, thank you to uh, Steve and everyone else doing all the work uh, on this. Very much appreciated. With that, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. 
I agree. Councilmember Botworth. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. Mayor Peterson. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. <laughs> With that, we've come to the end of tonight's agenda. As I said uh, erroneously last time, uh, this will be the last time that I close out uh, one of our council meetings uh, as, as mayor in what has been a very interesting and, dare I say, unprecedented year as mayor. Um, so for the very last time, uh, as the mayor leading the meeting, closing out the meeting, I will implore you all to please take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And we will see you in December for our last meeting of the year. And uh, with that, meeting adjourned. Have a good night. Goodbye.